Good morning, Alamance Presbyterian Church. This is your favorite associate pastor, Pastor Jess, uh, wishing you a very happy April Fool's Day. I hope that you are spending it being a fool for Christ, which is our highest calling. And this week, I wanted to share with you, lots of folks have been calling and emailing and texting me, asking for recommendations for devotionals because they're finding that they have time in their schedule to dedicate to prayer, and they're finding that they need time to dedicate to prayer so that they can process everything that they're experiencing through their jobs or hearing about in the news or encountering on the home front. And so I wanted to share two practices with you. I have to confess, reading devotionals has never been a very large part of my spiritual practice. So I can't recommend a lot of resources, but I do have two resources that I'd love to share with you today that have really been helpful to me. So the first one is an application for your phone. Uh, I love it. I found out about it about two years ago, and it's an app called Pray As You Go. Pray As You Go. And I'm because I'm not really tech savvy, I'm just going to hold up my screen to this screen so you can kind of see it. Uh, Pray As You Go is an application. It's very high church, so it has a lot of sort of higher liturgical uh, information in it. It's very British, but it's a wonderful app that has prayers for every single day of the week and reflection and Lectio Divina, so a, an illuminated reading process every day of the week. So they'll read a scripture passage and then um, they'll have some questions that encourage your reflection on that scripture passage. And then they'll read it through a second time and have questions for you to meditate on while you're listening the second time. And in addition to that, they have beautiful music from all over the world that's regularly incorporated. All the prayers um, are only between 12 and 15 minutes. So it's not a very time consuming devotional practice. And there's so many other things through the app that you can access to sort of beef up your spiritual practice. Right now they have um, a retreat called Pray As You Stay in acknowledgement of the coronavirus and the way it's affecting people's ability to move into physical and social spaces. Uh, they have lots of prayers on the Ignatian Examine. They have prayers on um, how to do the examine with children, things like that. You can download the prayers so you can listen to them in other places. You don't have to necessarily have the internet to always be able to listen to these things. And it's just a really wonderful resource. I use this probably more than any other devotion I've ever used in my life. And it helps me get centered um, when, when I remember to utilize it. So I would highly, highly recommend downloading the application Pray As You Go for your computer or your phone. If you don't have a computer, if sort of a more traditional devotional, a hard copy is up your alley, I recommend this one. This is, again, from um, one of my favorite spiritual gurus, Frederick Beekner, who's a Presbyterian pastor I've mentioned in sermons before. And this is not connected to any particular year. It's dated according to the day, so you can use it any year that you need devotional support. Um, and it's just beautiful reflections on various words, on various concepts. And I wanted to share the one that's focused on Lent which actually isn't today, April the 1st reading, but I thought it was really meaningful in this time um, when so much is up in the air, when so many of us can't see other people, uh, when anxieties are high and sometimes energy levels are really low. So I wanted to read this to you and encourage you to sit with these questions, to really think about and reflect on them. If you journal, to journal about them, or maybe to talk about them over dinner with your family. Uh, but So here's his reading on Lent. In many cultures, there's an ancient custom of giving a tenth of each year's income to some holy use. For Christians, to observe the 40 days of Lent is to do the same thing with roughly a tenth of each year's days. After being baptized by John in the River Jordan, Jesus went off alone into the wilderness, where he spent 40 days asking himself the question, what it meant to be Jesus. During Lent, 
Christians are supposed to ask one way or another what it means to be themselves. If you had to bet everything you have on whether there is a God or whether there isn't, which side would get your money and why? When you look at your face in the mirror, what do you see in it that you most like? And what do you see in it that you most deplore? If you had only one last message to leave to the handful of people who are most important to you, what would it be in 25 words or less? Of all the things you've done in your life, which is the one you would most like to undo? And which is the one that makes you happiest to remember? Is there any person in the world or any cause that if circumstances called for it, you would be willing to die for? If this were the last day of your life, what would you do with it? To hear yourself try to answer questions like these is to begin to hear something not only of who you are, but of both what you are becoming and what you are failing to become. It can be a pretty depressing business and all, but if sackcloth and ashes are at the start of it, something like Easter may be at the end. Friends, I know this Lent has been unprecedented, but we are an Easter people. We believe in the resurrection. We believe that the day is coming when we will get to see each other and hold each other and interact with one another again. And I would encourage you to take advantage of this time when we can't be with one another, to reach out, to share that love, and to show creative ways of how God has loved you and blessed you with those who maybe you can't be near physically right now, but who would love a phone call or a letter or a virtual hug. I love you all, I miss you all, and I look forward to the day when we can be together again. See you next week, Alamance.